DC electric motors were recently introduced in NAVCAD 2021. This quick video will demonstrate how easy it is to enter and define a DC electric motor for a project. We've already run a propulsion analysis for our sample EV1 project and we're looking for somewhere between 70 and 80 kilowatts. Now I'm going to shift the screen. Uh, so what we see here is a graphic of um, uh, data from an electric motor manufacturer's publication. There are two different looks that are often presented for an electric motor. One is a torque based definition against RPM. That's our green line here. The other is power based. That's our purple line. Now you'll see a couple different deviations from the torque and power based lines. One that drops off very quickly and one that's extended. The extended lines are with what's called field weakening. So I'll leave that to you to um, investigate further, but we're going to set up this field weakened green line here. And so what we're looking at is about 400 Newton meters of torque at roughly 1850 RPM. So that's going to be our critical entry information. So when we enter data, we'll go into our drive table We'll select our electric motor. We will click to define that. Now we'll just call this EV1 for our, our motor. That's a, a DC motor. AC motors are coming in uh, NAVCAD 2022. And then there are two quick definitions, um, what we call a torque and a, or a constant torque and the other a constant power. And those really represent the two field weakened and non field weakened um, options here. So we're going to use our um, generic DC constant torque constant power because we can see up to about 1850 we have constant torque and above 1850 we have more or less constant power. And we're going to select our proper units. We distinguish distinguish between mechanical power and electrical power. We're going to show our data entry in torque. This is a 400 volt system. We'll put 400 volts there. We'll also put 400 Newton meters at 1850 RPM. Our max no load RPM is going to be about 3800 and there will be no parasitic load. As soon as we have all that data entered, what we're going to see is a very quick definition of constant torque and then the torque at constant power. If I shift from torque to power, you'll see how that curve changes. So you'll see while this has not exactly a constant power in there, we're going to quickly estimate it as such. We'll see the implications of that here in just a minute. Now, we want to also include information about our motor efficiency so that we can um, calculate current draw and battery budgets. So we're going to estimate that from a, uh, a proprietary um, uh, partial load correction uh, that we developed here at HydroComp and we'll put um, like a 90% maximum motor efficiency there. The motor efficiency and the current um, have to include the effect of not only the motor itself, but the controller. So 90% is a good practical number to use for that. So let's put this back to a torque um, view. And so this that we're seeing here will kind of mimic the green line. So just by entering a couple pieces of data, we have created um, a fairly detailed representation of this of this motor. Now we can also enter explicit data um, if we want to across the RPMs. We can set this to defined and manually update this if we want it a little bit more accurately representing the motor curve. Well, I'm going to click OK here and then when I run the the analysis and I'll just accept the a propeller that's in there. 
What we see is this column here in the middle for the electric demand per motor. Now, instead of fuel consumption that we would have for an internal combustion engine, we have um, electric power in kilowatts, the current draw, and the motor efficiency. When I plot this against the electric motor load curve, what we see is here's the mechanical efficiency, the constant torque line and the constant power line. So we're good to about 27 knots. We've got good margin here. So let's take a look at what would happen if we went back and chose the other option, a generic curve. Now we're going to drop the power off. And so we have a constant torque, but we no longer have a constant power. That's the motor without field weakening. And so what we'll see is when we recalculate this, in fact, all I really needed to do is just redisplay it. We have our curve shape as such. And again, we've got good margins for um, uh, overload or, or anything that, uh, that we might encounter. And that's all there is to it. It's as quick as entering just a couple pieces of data, choosing your basic motor shape type, and then um, continuing along as normal. Thanks much.